It's that time of year where I'm wrapping up a lot of project pans and so this is my second finale in a row. I just did my Partners in Cream finale yesterday and today we're doing the Pan Those Eyeshadows finale. If you saw my Plan to Pan video that I put out a few months ago, you'll know that I'm trying to finish a quad from Charlotte Tilbury in the new year and that will be part of a project pan that I'm doing separately. And so I won't be doing the Pan Those Eyeshadows again. I would like to focus on those four shadows for now. And depending on how well I do on the quad, I might bring pan those eyeshadows back. I might even try the level up one instead just because I've been seeing that a lot and I think that would be really cool to try. Level up is kind of like where you pick a palette, use all the shades once, and then you try to hit pan on one, and then level two, you try to take another palette, use all the shades twice, and hit pan on two shades, and it goes up to level five. I really like the random aspect of pan those eyeshadows because you really don't know what you're going to get, but I also like the idea of t having a project that allows you to use all the shades in each palette. But that's a problem for another day. I'm going to focus on the Charlotte Tilbury quad. We'll see how long that takes to finish. Who knows? It might take me all year. So let's jump into the update. I do have some pretty good progress and even a pan to share. So let's start with a picture of the five shadows that I was working with for the past couple of months. I just checked my schedule and the last time I did a Panda's eyeshadows update was October 16th, so that is over two months ago, probably two and a half months ago. Um, I don't have two and a half months worth of progress, I was just playing around with other eyeshadows. And honestly, I haven't been wearing a lot of eye makeup lately. Let's start with the one that's been in the project the longest, and that is Orange Soda from ABH. It's from the Soft Glam Mini Palette. I don't have pan on this yet. I don't know how because I have used this a total of 43 times and yes there's a dip in there but it's just a very hard pressed shadow which is surprising for ABH mattes and even though I reach for it a ton I'm just really not making progress enough to hit pan. Once I actually hit pan though there won't really be a lot of product left because I am wearing it away evenly. I'm using a bigger brush to apply it and so I'm just very surprised. It didn't take me nearly as long to hit pan on this shade next to it, which is Dusty Rose. That one I just hit pan on organically because I was reaching for it a lot. It would probably take me at least another 20 to 30 uses, if not more, to hit pan if I'm using it at the pace that I am now. The next one is Mr. Sandman by ColourPop. I have mine housed in the Go and Coconuts palette, and I have made quite a dip, and since I had hit pan on Poker Face from Tarte, the, the update before, I was able to focus on this one a lot more. And I really like this color. I think this is beautiful. It pairs nicely with a lot of deeper mattes and it paired really well with Dairy from Shroud, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And so I'm glad I reached for it. I was really feeling purple eyeshadows for a bit there. So this is fun. It is a bit of a chunkier formula. I find that it's the same formula as Coco Crush right above it. Just very chunky, you don't need a lot, and you kinda need to be careful when you reach for it. Oh, I forgot to mention, Orange Soda last month I used 15 times just in the one update, and this one I reached for six times for a total of 15 times over the course of this project. I didn't hit pan on it, but that's fine. I did make a bit of a dent, and I really liked it, and maybe I can hit pan on it at a later time. The next one is from Shroud Cosmetics. It's from the It's Freakin' Bats palette, and I got the shade Dairy, which is a really, really dark, cool tone purple matte. And I hit pan on it. In order to hit pan, I reached for it an additional 16 times. And over the course of the project, I've reached for it 28 times. I had reached for it before that. It wasn't brand new when I brought it into the project, but I would say I probably took like 30 something uses, which is way fewer than I thought. I thought with it being such a deep shade that I would have a lot of trouble eventually hitting pan, but I used it in a very similar way that I used Tombstone from Shroud. I had hit pan on that earlier this year and it was a dark gray matte. And the way I hit pan on this and on Tombstone is by putting it all over the lid and using it as a base so that the shiny duochromes, multichromes, metallics on top could really shine. And I just really liked how it would almost transform the color that was above it and make it sometimes a little bit deeper, maybe make it more cool toned. You figure I was wearing the shade a lot in like the fall months where I was going for those deeper, more vampy looks. So it was a really appropriate time of year to bring in a shade like that. I loved it. I love that shade. I think it's beautiful, especially for darker mattes kind of being hit or miss for me. Like sometimes the formula is really great <laughs> and sometimes it's not, or it's just too messy that it's like not even worth it. This one wasn't too difficult to work with. 
pretty much every Shroud Cosmetics dark matte that I've worked with has been great. So I'm glad the majority of my dark matte shades are from that brand. And I'm glad. I'm so glad to have a pan in this palette. It's the first pan in this palette in particular. And I'm just really excited. That was like a very pleasant surprise when I hit pan on it that day. The next one is Big Moves. These next two shadows I brought in last update and so I haven't had them for as long and Big Moves is this corner shade here from Colourpop from the Megan Mobs palette and I think I might have accidentally like I think I was supposed to choose this top shade or there was a different shade from the palette that I was supposed to choose but I accidentally just grabbed for this one so I figured I might as well keep going and so I have made a little dip in it I used it six times it's a really nice cool tone transition color and it worked well with those purpley looks that I was wearing I just didn't reach for it um, enough to really make a significant dip, which is fine. But yeah, I just, I like this palette. I have moved around some of the shades. None of my ColourPop shades where you can move shades around look the same as whenever I first bought them. I've been like moving them around slowly over the years. So I don't even know what some of these originally were supposed to be. Like, I don't think that was supposed to be there. I think that's from like the It's My Pleasure palette or something. But in general, really loving um, these mauve colors. And I didn't hit pan on it, but I did make progress and I was glad to reach for this palette a little bit more as a result. And the very last one was one, again, that I rolled in last month. And it's from the Geology Pilbara palette. And I rolled in Chert, which is this top shade here. This is like a duochrome, so it has a reddish base and then a gold shift. And when I first swatched, I was really excited. I was like, oh wow, this is gonna be beautiful for those warm looks. But something in the formula um, I don't know if it changed or if I just didn't notice it before, but in order for me to get anything on my brush, I kind of had to dig in there, and every time I did use it, I needed a lot of it in order for it to look the way I wanted on my lids. And so I reached for this 13 times, but I've made a humongous dent in here, and I imagine if I used it like five or six more times, I'd be able to hit pan. The only other shimmery shade from this palette that I've used enough to fully know the formula is Starry Sky, and it's a completely different formula, so I don't know if it's just that one in particular, but it was fine. It looks nice once you actually apply it. I do have to use it with a wet brush in order to get the opacity that I want, but once I get it on the lids, it's beautiful. In general, I love these mattes. These are very unique shades at least to me in my collection, um, especially this shade right here, Calcopyrite. Just a beautiful palette. I love how small it is. And I mean, even though that formula was a little bit, it just took some time to figure out. Now that I know how to use it, I do really like it. So I don't have any bonus pans and I don't have any looks to share with you. I'm sorry. Any of the looks that I did in my last update are pretty much the same looks that I did in this update. I don't think I took one with that church shade. Let me check. Actually, yes, I do have one with the church shade. So I, I, at first I didn't think that I had taken any pictures to have looks, but I actually do have two looks to share with you. The first one is that cool tone purple look and I'm using Solitaire. I think it's not, it's not called Solitaire. It's called Big Moves. It's that <laughs> ColourPop mauve shade. I have that in the crease and then I have Mr. Sandman all over the lid with Derry underneath it. And then I have MUG Makeup Geek Phantom on the inner corner. It's like a duochrome purple shade. And then on my lips, I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Medium lipstick. And then the second one is the opposite. It's a really cool tone, or it's a really warm tone look. And that is the one where I'm wearing Calco Pirate all over the lid. I apologize, I don't remember what else I have on my crease. It's been so long. I took this on October 21st. <laughs> so it's been over two months since I did this makeup look. And I'm sorry, I don't remember what I have on my lids you'd think I would have written it down. Really quickly, let's talk about my pan percentage change. In my last update, I had 33 pans out of 235, giving me a pan percentage of 14%. Since then, I've hit pan on an additional shade, Dairy from Shroud, so I now have 34 pans, giving me an updated percentage of 14.5%. Since I started the project back in June, I had a 12.3% and now I'm at 14.5, so I've gone up a little over 2%. I will include a slideshow at the end of the video showing all the eyeshadows that I worked on and so that you can see them getting pan on them over time. I'm really glad to have done this project, even if it was only for half a year. I really love these types of projects. They're always so fun to watch and they're fun to do as well, but I am going to take things down a notch when it comes to focusing on eyeshadows for project panning. Really focus on finishing that quad just because I've always wanted to pan a palette. And then depending on how well I do with that or you know what kind of inspiration comes my way, I might do an eyeshadow project pan or some sort of exercise where I reach for eyeshadows more 
down the line, but I don't have anything in plan just yet. I really appreciate all your support, especially if you've been following me for a long time. I will have some other Pan Those Eyeshadows participants in the description box. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.